Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're doing something I've been needing to do for some time, and that is changing tires on my trailer for my mower. This mine just so happens to be a John Deere 8Y with the 4.00 by 6 tires. And these things are pretty easy to come by. And I believe they're pretty easy to change out too for the most part. And I'm going to end up doing it two different ways. One way with the tire on the trailer and one way with it being off the trailer. That way you guys would know would be able to know how to do both ways. That way I can just show you. It makes for a little bit better video anyhow. So I'll go ahead and get this thing flipped over and go ahead and get started. All right, so these are the tires that I got the other day for them. They are uh, four, these are four ply tires. And as always, they're always deformed. So that makes it a little bit harder to change out. And this one's really messed up. These are these are actually wheelbarrow tires, but they will work for the trailer. And I think these are even the, used to be the same ones. I used to be four wheelbarrows, but as you can see, this one here is pretty well gone. They wound up putting a tube in here. We're gonna try to go tubeless and see what we can do. So we're gonna go ahead and pull one this one off and try to get it started all right so taking these off is pretty simple get some pliers and take this cotter key cotter pin whatever you want to call it out make sure you get the washers and whatever else may be there off and the tire will just slide right on off so that's pretty simple and self-explanatory there all right, so if you have one of these little tools it helps out quite a bit uh, there's several different varieties of these tools this just so happens to be the one I have on hand. If it's tubed, definitely want to make sure that all the air has been pulled out and that way there's no chance of a unexpected accident. Once you get it loose, of course out. And of course, presuming, <laughs> presuming you guys don't have the right tools like I don't, flatheads work pretty good and I try, sometimes, sometimes it helps to have something in the, in the shaft of the rim to help you. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So let's go ahead and get this worked out. Ah, worked out here. There's that one there. This one's a little bit more stout. You know what? Sometimes you be able to rotate it. Sometimes, not all the time. Uh, apparently. <laughs> So, you just have to kind of work it around and eventually it will come out. You want to have at least two, two uh, flatheads or whatever it is you're using, tire tool, whatever. That way you can have a little bit better chance, or well, that way you can work it around I should say just like this working it around is what I found to be the best way of doing this and maybe. I see on this one I got lucky and I don't have to break the bead so that's why this one's coming off a lot easier okay so it's worked around You'll want to drop it, get as much of this exposed as possible so that you can try to get the, uh, as much of the inner tube exposed as possible. And if the inner tubes just jump, it doesn't matter how it comes out. I'm going to go ahead and cut the camera and get to where I can pull this out for you guys. Oh, go ahead and have this out. Because you'll have to work with it and get wind up getting it out. Well, uh... As I was trying to pull this out, the whole rim came out with it. So, uh, that's that. I was going to show you that part on how to get it back around the back side out, but <laughs> kind of missed that. 
Let's go ahead and try to get this on. Sometimes you can use grease and be able to press it on. Well, not really press it on, but use grease to kind of slick it on, I should say. Oh, the valve stem. Uh, do you want to get, if you're doing it this way, you'll want to get some valve stems. I think these are the half inch. Well, the 0.453 inch rim hole. Now appears to be about right for what this is. Uh, and this is where this, this tool comes in really handy. Because what you can do is stick it in, throw this on top on there, onto the valve stem itself, and then just kind of pull it through. You know what? That is not gonna work. I don't think, maybe. Yeah, it's probably not gonna work. I might have to modify this a little bit. All right, uh, I'm gonna have to drill this out a little bit, but the thing is they might sell these a smaller one, but I'm not 100% certain. Cause I didn't, I didn't see anything smaller than the 0.453. Go ahead and see what happens. All right, so what I got here, for those who wanna know, is a 15 30 second drill bit. I'm gonna use to drill this out and go from there. All right, let's see what that does. There we go. That managed to work. All right, so let's see what this new one, how this new one will go on there. If you have it loose, it doesn't matter which side you start on. If you have it off, it doesn't matter which side you have it on. All right, so, yep, I'm on there. Oh, another thing I need to mention. Make sure that if you're doing, uh, whenever you're doing this, make sure that the valve stem is on the opposite side or, well, your start side, whenever you go to start putting this over, because you don't want to damage that. No way. Okay, so. I'm just kind of working around there now the fun part and it's usually the the hardest to deal with and this is where the deformity of the tire really becomes a pain in the rear so I got a fix for that. I'll come back to you and show you. If you just happen to have a strap like this, this is the old trick I was talking about. There, it may end up being pretty helpful for you. And another thing that might help a little bit is one of these styles of air trucks. This style here clamps onto your valve stem. That way it's less likely to come off that way it's applying constant air and that way you can sit here and mess with it while it, the air is still putting in and that way you can try to get a seat on there instead of using one of these th these styles one of these styles of trucks so oh, just another little tip there if you're if you happen to have one let's go ahead and get to this there uh it's pretty simple on this method this is the poor boy's way of doing it. I, well, I would call it poor boy's way of doing it. This is the way I've done it for quite some time. Whenever I had to replace the tires on, well, anything small. Uh, I don't do this on vehicles, of course. Make sure you get this set up. Get set up on here and as close to center as possible. That way this, it applies as close to equal amount of pressure across the entire tire and i promise you these are the right tires <laughs> and this also may be the reason why they used inner tube and not tubeless go 
play and cut it here while I try to fight this getting it on and go back from there. Well guys, uh, I got fed up. I took it on off. Uh, I was trying to do this as cost effective for you guys as I possibly could. And I got tired of fighting this daggum thing. And so I went and got some tubes. And this was the only thing I had available to me. So I'm going to end up using these. It's a slime. Heavy duty smart tube. Daggum things were fit, just shy of 15 bucks a piece. On top of the freaking tires, those were 30 bucks a piece. So $45 tires. Let's go ahead and get these things all, this one back off. There's only one way that I know how to get these things off, and that's cutting them. So I'm hoping that I didn't booger the, this up to the point to where I can't use the tube. So let's get this tube out of here and get set up on here. Because with this set, you want to get the tube in. I do believe anyways. I think it'd be easier to get the tube in there before you get the tire on the rim because you just don't really have the room for it. Wear it out best you can. One thing that may, I will let you guys know, if you're trying to do this as cheap as you possibly can due to money, what you can do with these tires is flare them out like this, as you can see, because whenever you get them, they're so squashed in, they're all but freaking touching on the inside. What you can do is flare them out and possibly put blocks or something inside the tire to keep the keep it separate separated keep it like that for a day or two if you're able to and then try to do what i was just doing trying to do with the valve stem and everything it may work it may not i don't know but i feel i at least let you guys know on that uh so like i say this this uh I was, I was really tired of fighting the daggum thing. Let's go ahead and get this in there. It goes in there pretty easily. Now, doing this, you've got to be really careful about not damaging the inner tube whenever you go to put this in because that's the last thing you need to do is damage that. Even if it is the slime stuff. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and try to get this, go ahead and get this tube back on and then put the... Well, we get the tire back on and then do the tube. I'm just really, uh, really worried about that tube. Okay, so while it's like this, I'm going to try it this way. Then you gotta fish the tube in, all the stem in. Either your little tool put it on there or your cap, if it's not too small for the hole. You just need a little bit, that way it will uh, stay in place and you wind up not losing it. Losing your valve stem here. Vice grips, you got a pair of vice grips that will help keep one side on while you work it. And why this daggum thing's giving me fits, I don't know, cause it went on pretty daggum easily. All right, well, you get the general idea. I'm gonna go ahead and jump straight to get where this tire is on. All right, finally. <laughs> Man, it is on. And then make sure your stem's in and air it up. I might have to, I might have to use something to keep this up. One thing you do need to make sure is, is your valve stem is lined up right. If you don't, you'll end up uh, messing up your inner tube. Here, I didn't quite make sure that it was. All right. When we need 30 PSI. All right, so I mean, just make sure you got the right PSI, right air pressure in there. There we go, there's 30. Put the pack, uh, the cap back on, and put it back on the trailer in reverse order of the way that you took it off. So now I'm gonna move on to doing it on the trailer this time. 
Now, as always, make sure that tire that you're working on, all the air is out of it. You don't want to have any kind of unexpected injuries or mishaps. Cannot stress that enough. What I'm doing here is pulling the valve stem out and this will pretty much guarantee that the air is out. All right, let's get this thing off. So just like doing it on a workbench, except doing it on there, on it itself. It does make it a little bit harder on yourself because it's constantly moving. If you don't have the option to, you'll need to learn how to do it this way. And of course you'll be fighting the inner tube if there's one in there. And if you can, get it out now if you can, like I said, because it just makes it easier to get it off the tire. Oh, well, unless you're able to force it off. Since I'm replacing this inner tube anyhow, I'm not terribly worried about it. Man. I don't think that was the right inner tube. <laughs> Now there is one thing I noticed just now on these uh, slime ones it has a valve stem remover built into the cap it's like this so if if you need, need it so there's already one built into the cap so that's neat to know uh, let's uh, let's this in there. Oh, uh, that's the bottom. Yeah. Like I said, whenever you get it in there, early, like I said earlier, if you watch that part, be sure to get your valve stem set up to where it won't retract back in there while you're trying to get the rest of the tire back on. So either use your tool or use something to help keep it out of the hole. Don't forget your channel locks. Because these do seem to help to some extent. And then just kind of work it on. When you're doing this, be careful of the inner tube, especially if you spent $15 on the daggum thing. There we go. All right. All right. So, you got it in there, got it on. Go ahead and get your uh, tool or whatever you use off of your valve stem. Like before, make sure that you hold on to, I don't know how well you can see it with the camera, but hold on to your stem. Keep it as far out of the hole as possible because that way it will stay seated in there. What? You see that? <laughs> what in the world freaking happened there? I've never seen that happen before. I don't frankly know. Well, something changed. All right, so that's how you do it on with it on there. 
actually seemed to be a little bit easier with it on than with it off. So do with that as you do with that information as you wish. But like I said, I wanted to show you guys how to do it both ways. And I did. So tires are changed finally and uh, ready for use this summer. All right, thanks for watching, guys. And if you enjoyed what you uh, watched, I got playlists for uh, working on equipment like this, along with my, my mower and various other things. If you want to go check that out in the playlist sections, go right ahead. If you also want to go check out, I have a, a Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and Twitter. Twitter I'm not terribly active on but but uh, if you want to go check those out I'll have them linked in the description below on those sites along with YouTube shorts I have uh, one to three minute videos all my one minute videos make it to YouTube shorts because there's a restriction on that and all my longer ones make it to Facebook and t Facebook TikTok and Instagram and my one minute ones make it to twitter as well so if you want to go check those out like i said they will be linked in the description below so now on to the video verse all right so today's video verse if you've been following along with the with these we finished up chapter eight and we're moving on to chapter nine of hebrews and I'll be doing verses 1 through 10 of chapter 9. It says, Now the first covenant also had regulations for ministry and an earthly sanctuary. For a tabernacle was set up, and in the first room, which is called the holy place, where were the lampstand, the table, and the pre presentation loaves. Behind the second curtain was a tent called the most holy place. It had the gold altar of, of incense and the Ark of the Covenant, covered with gold on all sides, and which was a gold jar containing the manna. Aaron's staff was budded in the tablets of the covenant. The cherubim, cherubim of glory were above the Ark, overshadowing the mercy seat. It is not possible to speak about these things in detail right now. With these things prepared like this, the priests entered the first room repeatedly, performing their ministry. But the high priest alone enters the second room, and he does that only once a year and never without blood, which he offers for himself and for the sins the people had committed in ignorance. The Holy Spirit was making it clear that the way into the most holy place had not yet been disclosed, while the first tabernacle was still standing. This is a symbol for the present time during which gifts and sacrifices are offered that cannot perfect the worshiper's conscience. They are physical regulations and only deal with food, drink, and various washings imposed until the time of the new order. And that is Hebrews chapter 9, verses 1 through 10. And I'll see you guys in the next one.